one of the strengths of EDS in general and also in mapping is that we measure x-rays of a whole wide range of energies. So if our beam energy is at 20,000 volts, we'll measure x-rays up to 20,000 kilo electron volts. That's a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because we don't need to know anything about our sample before we measure it. We know that all elements present will be picked up by our detectors. But it's also a curse because um, if we use, if we rely on things like auto ID to identify the elements, then mistakes can creep in because there are such things as overlaps between different um, elements with different X-rays, uh, but they but they share similar energies basically. So. I find it most useful to select a predefined list of elements before I true map my data. Um, if I auto ID, just to show an, an example, I can end up with elements that, geologically speaking, for this type of sample, uh, which is a peroxinite, um, I would not be expecting high concentrations of tantalum. This is purely forming from an overlap with silicon. Uh, it's a common occurrence, so the software has tried to uh, identify all the elements and it's seen a, a bump at silicon and thought, well, maybe I can get some tantalum uh, in that bump as well. Geologically speaking, that's uh, not accurate, so we want to remove that. I can double-click it to remove it or I can just press exclude when it's uh, selected. So it's very useful to come up with a, an accurate list of elements and to select those elements. So if I wanted to include copper, I can include it here. Uh, and it's important to get that list before you true map because you can see each time you change an element in here, the software starts true mapping again. So if you've gone through and set all your colors and um, all of your brightness and contrast, it's going to reset all that each time you add a different element. So the process is to acquire your maps, select the elements, that you want to extract from uh, your map data and then true map for those elements.